Hello and welcome to Hollow Acres Homestead. My name is Stephanie and this video was kind of a repeat of a previous video I did. Um, 13 things that you need to... I forget the title. 13 things. So I'm, I'm redoing it because I did the video, you know, in fact I've recorded this two or three times and the first time I put it, it's on YouTube. Um, I can link a card. It's not very good because it's so loud. The cicada bugs and, you know, nature being extremely loud. So I figured I'd do it again. Well, I re-recorded it, and uh, I had put on a external mic, and I didn't turn it on, so there's no audio. And then I did it again, but my focus was out, and it was just super blurry, and it wasn't even a good video. Audio was better, though. So, fourth time's got to be the charm. So with the way that things currently are turning out to be, um, just let's say worldwide, the United States, um, things are getting pretty bad. They are. And as focused as I have been on prepping and putting away food and putting away medical supplies and learning herbalism and doing all the things that I've been doing, I also kind of want to put out, not so much a warning, but just more like um, some, some crap's going down. Some bad things are going to be happening soon, and I want to help prepare you, show you the things that I'm doing, and... And if nothing else, at least the, this video and the information that I'm going to give you is going to give you some ideas of some things that you need to put away and prepare for, what do they call it, SHTF. Before I get to my list, I just want to say something really quickly. So I went to the store today, and I have noticed a false sense of abundance and along with that false sense of abundance, I am noticing how the typical food that we would buy at the grocery store, how everything's starting to change. It doesn't taste the same. It doesn't taste right. Or you're spending more money for less amounts of food. Or there appears to be an abundance of stuff that have been shipped to the grocery stores and everyone's thinking now, okay, well, we're coming out of this, the whole food shortages and everything, and I hate to be the one to tell you, but that is not the case. What we are witnessing right now is a false sense of abundance and a false sense of security. They are pushing out as much food, as much stuff as they possibly can to make people think that things are getting better. But in reality, everything that we're starting to get is stuff that has been shipped, has been waiting, has been halted. Another perfect example is the oranges um, that I put in my last video. It's not this one, because <laughs> I just finished up that one. Um, but the oranges that I just canned up, three of them in the bag were bad, and they were kind of starting to be mushy. So they probably were picked a couple of months ago. A month, I don't, I don't actually, I don't actually even know how long. <laughs> oranges last for on the shelf. I think it's a couple months though. My point is they were kind of mushy. Three of them are bad. One was molding on the inside. So the food is just not what it used to be. I really feel like it is more important than ever for people to start preparing for an economic collapse. Without spreading fear, because that's not what I'm trying to do, um, I want you to be prepared and not scared. I hear that a lot. I watch a lot of preppers on YouTube. I watch, um, I watch a lot of news. I really do. World news. What's going on? I want to know what's going on in the world around us. And as I am starting to do that more, I'm noticing how many people aren't. There are so many people who think that everything is okay and that everything's going to get better. And it, it's kind of sad. It really is. And, and then to be also, I'm one of the crazy people, you know. The end is near, it's coming. It's okay if you think I'm crazy. I know that I'm weird, I'm a weird individual, and if you think I'm crazy, well, that just doesn't bother me. I don't care what you think. I think, uh, I think my little rant time is over. We're, we're gonna get away from the, the doom and gloom of things. And, um, I'm gonna read you my list. I typed out a list, I did. See, second, it's my list. Yes. So these are 13 things that I really feel that you need to prepare and store away now. Number one would be water. Store up as much water as you are able to um, store. As much water as you are able to hold, you know, enough that you have space for. Personally, I have city water. So 
there has been times when the water has been slightly contaminated. Like I can tell I have a very sensitive stomach. And a lot of times if I drink water directly from the sink, even though we have a filtration system on the home, it's a difference than drinking fresh spring water or directly out of the refrigerator where the uh, filter filters out more things. You can also can up water. It's actually really easy to do and I think it's just water bath canning. Just put your water in a jar and can it up. I haven't tried that personally. Um, we get the big jugs. Another good way to store water would be by building or making a, a rain water catchment system. You can do that off your house, off of a shed. Um, you can just build a platform. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Do your research if that's something that you're interested in. Along with the rainwater catchment system, you are going to need a water filtration system to filter out all of, you know, the gunk and stuff. Like I said, do your research before you just start collecting rainwater because there are things that you need to do to make sure that it's safe to drink. Number two would be food. We need food to live, right? Without food, we die. I think it's a good rule of thumb to have at minimum six months worth of food put away for your entire family. At minimum, some people have food put away for three, six years, ten years to start freeze drying things and you're, you're talking about 30 years, you know, worth of um, shelf staple food. Never freeze dried anything, but I do dehydrate stuff. That is the way that I put away a lot, a lot of my herbs, some peppers, things like that. I have a video where I just briefly go over how I am storing food in a space where I, I don't have storage here. I have nowhere to actually put food. I have since added a shelf or two and moved some things around, so I will do another video. I've added more food to it too. Like I said, I went to the store today. Number three would be medical supplies. That would include things like bandages, butterfly bandages, ace bandages, medical tape, any prescription medicine that you or your family is on, including EpiPens, uh, maybe some Benadryl, you know, medical supplies. Anything that... You can think of it like, um, here we have hurricanes and we have a hurricane pack. I have a first aid bag where I keep everything for an emergency type situation where I have like a CPR mask in there and everything. Um, but the cabinet behind me is what is going to be the apothecary. Right now it's just a medicine cabinet because there's not enough herbs in it yet to call it an apothecary. I do have a video on that coming out very soon, so you will see what I have been doing back here. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with medical supplies and medicine. Um, it's not a bad idea to start learning herbalism. I have started doing that. Um, I've been learning how to make tinctures with high grade alcohol. I have been dehydrating herbs and learning how to use them. Today I made some basil tea. It was yummy. But if it turns out that you can't afford the medicine or that there is no medicine, um, you know, sometime soon or even in the near future, whatever, however long the distance is, if it turns out that there is no medicine or you can't get your hands on medicine, learning how to use natural medicines is just good advice. It's a good idea. I mean, before there was medicine, what we call medicine, there was herbalism. They healed people with herbs and plants. Kind of brings me to number four, which is liquor, high grade alcohol. You can use that alcohol for making tinctures as an antiseptic. You can use it for bartering and you can make some tasty drinks with it. Number five would be seeds and fertilizers. They kind of go hand in hand. In a time where there is no food, where the food's too expensive, or there's little food in the stores and it's hard to get your hands on, the best thing that we can do is learn how to grow a garden. So store up on seeds for a year or two. Seeds do not expire. If you look on the back of seed packets, you will see a sell-by date. And that sell-by date is, it, it has to be put on the uh, packets for retail sale. It has to be sold the year, what is it, the year of or the year after of the seeds being harvested, but the seeds will last, I mean, forever if stored properly in a cool, dark place or in the freezer, which is a cool, dark place. Mm -hmm. Fertilizers, um, anything to fertilize your plants with, right? A, you could use, now you can buy fertilizers in bulk and you can also learn how to make your own fertilizers from plants. There are things that you can grow specifically as a fertilizer to fertilize your entire garden with and you're not having to spend a whole bunch of money on fertilizers. I guess in here we should also add kind of pest control. I guess that kind of goes with it. Garden stuff, right? Pest control, uh, diatomaceous earth, 
I keep on hand. I have garden, uh, a garden variety. That's not right, but for the garden is for outside use. And I have a food grade use. Uh, food grade use I use on my dogs for fleas. Um, you can you can drink it. It's completely safe. The garden one is not safe for human consumption. I guess this would also count like neem oils and things like that. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail about, you know, all the fertilizers and all the pest control that's out there. What I'm saying is, you know, look at the prices, look at things. It's not a bad idea to bulk order your seeds, fertilizers, pest control, anything that you feel that you might need for, I don't know, a year, two years. That stuff lasts. I mean, it lasts forever. No, it doesn't last forever, but it lasts a long time. It does. Number six. Or six. Hang on. Six? How are you looking at this? Number six would be animals, such as chickens for meat and eggs, such as rabbits for meat or pelts, goats for milk or meat, uh, pigs, I mean, you name it. Animals that can be used for meat, your protein source. And you don't have to have a very large farm or a very large homestead or a whole lot of land to have farm animals, to have homestead animals. I live in a subdivision. I have had chickens. Um, actually, I got them in 2019. And... We got eggs for a while, then we got meat out of them, so it was worth it. At this time, I do not have any animals, but I am looking at some, and I'm very excited about that. Now, along with your animals, consider breeding your animals. That's something you need to think about. If you're going to be getting animals on your homestead, or in your backyard, or on your farm, or wherever it is that you're located, probably except an apartment, um, consider breeding them. You're going to need, obviously, to keep having animals. Your animals have to have babies, you know, in order to keep up your animal population. So consider that. I could talk for a long time about animals. I I'm not going to. I'm just going to move on. Okay. So number seven, a seven, there it is, would be animal feed. Store up on animal feed. Um, if you do math, you know, you can, yes, you can do math and figure out how much food you're going to need per month for all of your animals. Consider doing that. And your animals would also include your pets. So dogs, cats, hamsters, rabbits, uh, pigs, goats, anything obviously that needs food to live, store up food for them as well. And there are many ways that you can do this. Again, I'm not going to go into detail. If that's something you want to figure out, you can Google search, um, how do I store bulk food for my animals or, you know, whatever. Number eight would be electricity, candles, flashlights. Did you? What did this? This? Three? This is more difficult than I figured it would be putting up fingers. How is that? A five-year-old could do it. Electricity. That's what I said. Candles, flashlights, batteries to power your flashlights. Also kind of goes into your like emergency type kit. I talked about my hurricane kit. We have flashlights and candles and stuff like that as well. Also lighters to light your candles. How else are you going to light your candles without a fire? Mm -hmm. That brings me to number nine. Boom. A way to cook your food. Whether that be over a campfire, a wood oven, whether you have a generator. You know what, I think that that would go back into electricity and things. Ways to cook your food generators, you need a way to keep your food cold. The point is, you just need a way to cook your food. Number 10 would be hygiene products. And that might not be something that you would think about that you would need. You'd think about, let's store away food, let's store away water, let's make sure the pets are taken care of. Have you thought about your hygiene? Shampoos, conditioners, soap. Razors, shaving cream, makeup, toothpaste, toothbrushes, feminine products such as pads and tampons. Have you seen the prices of those things lately? Isn't it insane how expensive that is? I'm just saying. Yeah, hygiene products. You gotta keep yourself clean. If you do not keep yourself clean, you're more likely to get sick. We have learned through history that cleanliness and hygiene is just as important as eating right and taking care of yourself. It's part of taking care of yourself, being hygienic and clean. Number 11. A boom, boom, 11. I don't have 11 fingers, so this is what you get. That would be cleaning products, such as laundry detergent, fabric softener, disinfecting spray, uh, liquid cleaners like Mr. Clean or Fabuloso or Pine Salt, dishwasher detergent, dish soap. I mean, I can keep going. You get, you get the gist, right? Cleaning products, whatever you usually use to clean with, it's a good idea to store up on that stuff. Also, a very good, natural, organic type of cleaner is vinegar. Vinegar will clean anything and get the smell out of anything. I have dogs, and they're kind of jerks, and they like to pee in the house, and it's nasty. I will use vinegar and a Castile soap mixed with some um, uh, essential oils. Sometimes, Most of the time it's peppermint because it's just so strong that it, it really helps to get that uh, dog pee smell out. But yes, 
Okay, the next page, we're almost done, guys. Essential oils, since I said essential oils, essential oils can be used for just about anything. Cleaning, health and beauty, pest control in the garden. I mean, seriously, the possibilities for essential oils are endless. You can make candles, I mean, I can keep going. Essential oils, but yeah. My last two, 12 and 13, are considered controversial. Not everybody likes to hear this. My number 12, that's 22, 12, 12. My number 12 is weapons. You need a way to defend yourself and your family, and if needed, to kill animals so that you can feed your family. Weapons would include things like knives, bow and arrows, guns, ammunition, you know, weapons. I, I don't know, a net gun? That would be cool. Flamethrower? That might be too much. Oh, but a flamethrower. Mm. <laughs> I want to make a flamethrower. Okay. Number 13. 13, yes, would be contraceptives. That is definitely not something that you would think about at the end of the world type of situation is contraceptives, condoms, guys, and birth control. As we all know by now, abortions are completely illegal. Nobody likes to talk about it, neither. I'm not going to put my two cents on this. I'm just going to say birth control, condoms, lubricant. Mm -hmm. Now, we are gearing up for the end of times, right? There's a bug that killed it. So we are gearing up for the end of times, right? No, we're not, but maybe, I don't know. Mm. It's definitely important to think not only about your family, but yourself. It is nice to extend out an arm, you know, to help somebody out, to help out somebody else who needs it. In this day and age, humanity seems to be uh, getting worse. Is that, is that good? Yeah? My hope and faith in humanity is well, I don't think it's ever been very good. I think since the time I've been an adult. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Okay. There's my 13 things. I'm going to stop talking now. I could drag this on for a while, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to. I'm not. Uh, that was my 13 things. Thir 13, 13, 1, 3, or... I can't believe it's so hard to hold up numbers. 13 things that you need to start stocking up on, you need to start preparing for. I think that my list is a very good list of things to survive the end of the world. Oh my gosh, you want to know what I thought? Shoes. I put shoes on my list. Your feet take you everywhere. Shoes. 14. Well, would that count as hygiene? Mm -mm, I don't think so. Shoes. You need shoes. I mean, your feet carry you everywhere you go. If you have crappy shoes, I don't see how that's going to work. I mean, I have a couple of pair of shoes that are falling apart. And I still wear them. Just because they're falling apart um, doesn't mean I'm going to stop wearing them. But shoes. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to go look for some shoes now. A couple different sizes. Get some sizes up for the kids. They can grow into them so that they always have at least one good pair of tennis shoes. Two good pair of tennis shoes or a good pair of boots or something. I'm going to write that on my list right now. I can't believe I forgot that shoes. All right. There's my, there's my list. 13 things that you need to put away to start preparing for everything that is coming. The doom and gloom. I'm so sorry. It's going to happen. Please hit a thumbs up if you liked this video, if you found any of the information to be helpful to you. Comment below if you are prepping and putting food and putting things away. If you feel like I forgot anything, leave it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging on. <laughs> If you made it to the end of the video, thanks. I'll see you next time here on Hollow Acres Homestead.